Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. This is CellBC coming right back at you doing another video episode of Growing for Freedom. And I decided since I'm hanging out here in this location, guys, we might as well do a quick round of updates from all the garden locations here at our headquarters. So that takes us over to the main production line. And you can see that we've got all eight of our SFVOGs currently working under the four 600 watt systems. Although I currently do not have all the bulbs running at that output mode, we are currently running in 400 watt mode across the board. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I've been noticing uh, a little bit of excessive leaf curling coming on these plants. And I know there have been people that have commented on this stuff before and it is you know, somewhat of a common occurrence when you are using HPS bulbs for vegetative purposes, but it has been a little bit more excessive than what I'm used to. And generally this is because of heat. And even though I have been tuning down some of my reflectors, you know, only running the, uh, the two on the right at 600 and keeping the two on the left at 400 in order to give a boost to these you know, slightly shorter plants over here, um, I'm still seeing it kind of break out, so I've decided to take everything down to 400 watt across the board, although I do believe there might be some other things uh, doing that with the plants, and it probably has possibly something to do with the fact that we are running, you know, quite a bit of, of, of imidacloprid concentrate. The, the fungus gnats, guys, have been something that have not completely gone away, and, you know, although I have been able to keep them at bay, they're not nearly as bad as they were, or as bad as what I've seen before in the past, it does not seem to be something that is completely you know, dealing, I'm not, I'm not able to completely deal with it. So we are going to have to step up the uh, control here a little bit. And I'm thinking of doing one of two things or at some point in the future, possibly both. And that is either give these, uh, you know, the, the soil layer and, and the pot area a nice spray down of really uh, high dose pyrinthians. And I do have that. That's the chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum extract, I believe. And I do have that on hand. I can use that to spray down. Or uh, I might give the NPK Industries Mighty Wash a, uh, a shot because I have had that just sitting around forever, have not used it in days. Uh, I haven't been using any of the products. In fact, uh, I used the last of my PM wash quite a bit ago and you know, essentially just using Eagle 20 as a preventative measure and have not had to do anything else other than sulfur sp spray small plants. You know, We haven't really been seeing much of that stuff around at all, if any, to be honest. Um, the only bugs we've been dealing with are just the aphids you know, a few months back and then the gnats are really the only thing that we continuously have to deal with with these plants. And either they're developing some kind of resistance to imidacloprid um, and the Azimax is not as effective as it used to be or something, but we definitely need to switch it up. So um, I did discover a gallon of that stuff just laying around over at Site B. So we are gonna grab that, bring it back here tomorrow and then load it up into the hand sprayer and just lay it down. I think we'll probably start with that first only because it's like the safer of the two products. It's just, you know, basically frequency modified or frequency charged water designed to just wreak havoc on insects. But <coughs> I do know firsthand that it works because, you know, I've sprayed that stuff on insects before and literally just watched them die instantly. It's pretty nutty shit. So we'll probably try laying that down a little bit. We've got quite a bit and uh, see if that deals with our problem. And if not, then we'll move on to the, uh, you know, the, Pyrinthians, and I, I hope I'm that. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, because I don't think that I've ever actually, you know, checked into how it's actually uh, appropriately pronounced. But in any case, guys, that takes us over now to what is going to be our next round of mother plants. So, uh, the process in regards to bringing these plants up is going to be no different. Uh, you know, flowering versus mother. You know, obviously we want to top the plants, and we obviously want to make really good, high quality selections. So. At this point, we have not yet made a single elimination. We still have 12 plants here per table, although I think that this one plant right here is probably going to be the first to go. You can see that it's very top cola. It's not even uh, coming close to penetrating uh, the rest of the under canopy of most of the plants around it. So we'll probably go ahead and take that out and uh, you know get these numbers whittled down here just a little bit. And um, yeah, you know we'll get ready to start transplanting these things after the harvest, the SFVOG harvest, and the moneymaker next door is completed. Now, the only thing that we are going to do different is that we're obviously not going to transplant these directly into seven gallon pots. We're gonna take them into the two gallon uh, rose pots, the square pots, do that first, and then we're gonna keep 16, all 16 plants, just like we do, would do with a flowering run under the 4K system, and just you know kind of watch them and clone off those for a while until they get large enough for us to make our final eight plant selections. And then at that point, we'll probably split the room in half keep the remaining coals into two gallons to keep cloning them while kind of keeping the smaller freshly transplanted on one side of the room, you know, giving each side its dedicated 2K. Um, and then at some point when the, the seven gallon pots really get big, we will then move the two gallon pots out completely and then have a finalized eight, eight plant 4K mothering room. And that's just gonna be awesome, guys. And then it just becomes a matter of bringing in 
racks and you know eight bulb T5s to keep all the live plants in that adjacent room, which I think is going to work out really great because we have the I think it's a either a ten or a twelve thousand dedicated or I'm sorry ten or twelve k BTU dedicated AC to cool that room, which is going to be necessary if we are going to be running you know all those eight bulb T5s as well as. Uh, supp supplementary single strips below them. So it's just going to be a wonderful setup, guys, I really think, and it's going to really boost the overall productivity, um, not only in overall plants, but with SFEOG, which is something that I know you guys are all incredibly excited about. So that is pretty much it, guys, for this video update. Next video update, we're going to cruise over to the tube tent, check in on how those plants are doing before we do our update from the 4K Moneymaker, and then after that, we'll head back over to Site B, maybe do an update or two before we finally make it uh, to the date of the live show. So as always, guys, email your questions directly to me, subwcqna at gmail.com. And thanks a lot for watching. I will see you all next time.